believe Malawians are creative, entrepreneurial, and industrious. And whether you're in mining, media, agriculture, transport, communication, healthcare, we all interact with some form of art or creativity every day mm -hmm. as we live and work. Mm -hmm. From this shared connection, we see the power of art and how it brings people together. If we formalized, collaborated, and increased our collective online presence, I believe Malawi's creative and cultural industries, or CCIs for short, could diversify our economies and stimulate economic growth. We could create jobs and generate wealth through intellectual property or goods and services. By now, you can guess some of the different sectors that make up CCIs. We have architecture, we have advertising, design, film, publishing, television, radio, the list goes on. And the possibilities of jobs are also endless. Studies show that CCIs are among the fastest growing economies on the global market. More so now as countries and companies continue to recover from the widespread effects of COVID-19. In 2021, Deloitte published a report that mm -hmm. tracked the changes the creative economy made to nine developed countries in Europe and Asia. I'll use the term creative economy, creative industries, or CCIs. So the study showed the kind of jobs that were created and also how the creative economy revitalized the, revitalized the GDPs of these nine nations. And that's just in Europe and Asia. Coming to Africa, we find different data on the economic contribution of creative industries to Kenya, where it contributes 5.3% to their GDP. In Malawi, a 2013 report by the World Intellectual Property Organization estimated that our creative industries contribute 3.4% to the GDP. Just to pause there for a second, 2013 was the latest study I could find. If you're someone who's interested in research, the arts has so many topics that are worth exploring and investigating. But beyond wealth generation, CCIs have social value, cultural value, and aesthetic value. Speaking of Malawi specifically, I can give examples of Jacaranda Cultural Center. The exhibitions and shows that they have showcase ideas, emotions, and perspectives of people in real time. Arts and heritage activities document narratives that we would otherwise not know about or hear from. Think of the work of Warner Collective. Arts and heritage activities promote diversity. Think of the work of Pepeta Malawi or other local and international organizations that are focused on human rights. Arts and heritage activities encourage collaboration mm -hmm. across industries, across multiple stakeholders. Think of the work of Zaluso Arts. If we change how we think about, believe in, mm -hmm. and act towards our creative industries, I believe we could all take part in making them viable for the economy through our individual efforts and through our collective efforts. So I briefly touched on how we could do this and now I'm going to expand on those. So first is formalization. As an arts manager, I believe in bringing business practices to the arts world and applying creativity to business. Putting things in black and white eliminates a lot of gray areas in the business world. And I think our creative industries could benefit from adopting the same attitude. Yeah. People need to have documentation for their work, whether it's contracting or accounting and so forth. If you work with artists or you are an artist yourself, take your paperwork seriously. Under formalization, we have structure. As of today, we don't have a dedicated ministry of arts and culture in Malawi. And I think that's a problem because artists on the ground are working very hard to produce good work and to collaborate, but they need, but they need help from the top as well. The government, 
NGOs and private stakeholders should help us make policy changes, like having a Ministry of Arts and Culture, because we also can't do it alone. And the government, NGOs, and private stakeholders should also invest in the infrastructure and institutions that empower artists to do their best work so that artists don't have to worry about dealing with high data costs or electricity problems on their own. Knowledge is everything. Most artists don't understand about intellectual property rights or copyright laws and so forth. We may know we have them, we know we need them, but we don't really understand them because it's not our area of expertise. If you're someone who's well versed in these issues, I encourage you to help artists work with them for the training and implementation of copyright laws and intellectual property rights. The second way we can promote our CCIs is through genuine collaboration. Now I emphasize genuine for a few reasons. Some professionals from other industries are not willing to work with artists, and they have their reasons. But these reasons also keep them from offering their services at affordable rates. So instead of doing their best work, an artist has to be their own lawyer, their own accountant, their own manager, their own therapist. And therapy is pretty affordable in this country when you compare the figures. But for someone who doesn't have a consistent means of income, it can be expensive. As I was doing research for this talk, I found an interesting article by the Africa Digital Media Foundation. They were talking about the challenges of Kenya's creative industries and what limits them from being more successful than they already are. One challenge I found in particular that relates to our context is that there is limited industry cohesiveness and ineffective associations for collective bargaining. Simply meaning that people work together, people work, but they don't work together. And associations are there but they don't have enough bargaining power. Now, I think Malawi's creative industry have the same problem, but for different reasons. There's a lot of gatekeeping, there's nepotism, there's elitism, there's unwillingness to listen to criticism, and that keeps our creative industries from being as big as they can be, from changing the lives and financial statuses of so many people. The last way I think we can support our CCIs is maximizing the digital connection. So, of the 20 million people living in Malawi country, currently, only 5.04 million are internet users. It's pretty crazy when you think about it, because that number dwindles when you think about how many are on social media and how many have actual spending power or buying power. So what this says to me is that we need to get on and attract the eyes of the global digital market if our creative industries are going to be successful because there are not enough eyes here for our work. I want you to think about your favorite Malawian artists, if you have any. They could be a poet, they could be a painter, they could be a musician. Do you have a few names in mind? Okay. Do they have a website? Okay. I know websites are expensive, but do they have a website? Are they on social media? Do you follow them on social media? Do you engage with their content if they post frequently? I think the onus is on both us content creators and us viewers to promote Malawian content. Because the more we share, the more we interact with, with the digital content made here, the more it can attract people in the general public, in the diaspora, and the rest of the world. Because if we don't share our work, no one else will. And if we don't increase our collective online presence, Malawi will not be monetized on some of these social media platforms. And I think our content is worth buying. So if we increase our collective online presence, we could do it. Now it sounds simple enough, right? formalization, collaboration, and increasing our digital presence. I think it's easy. But some of you might be skeptical. Some of you still think that the creative industries are cool, but they're not really financially lucrative. 
allow me to change your mind. There was a report published by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development in 2018. Now, that study found that we, we exported, sorry, we imported $64.7 million of creative goods. These were books, journals, media, crafts, and design. We imported $64.7 million of creative goods. And we imported $18 million of creative services. Now, if you can guess how much we exported, sorry to spoil it, but it was much less than that. We exported less than $1 million of creative goods and $1.6 million in creative services. Now, can you imagine what we, we could do for our economy, for the lives of artists, if we flipped those numbers even by 10%? If we exported $6 million of creative goods, if we exported $6 million of creative services. Now, as you can see from the pie chart, it's it should be the opposite. Export should be greater than imports. But I think we can change this in the next 5 to 20 years if we formalized, collaborated, and increased our online digital presence. UMTAD advocates for the creative economy as a tool for development and trade in all countries, more so for developing nations. I would like to conclude by saying that I agree with that report, that if we focus on building our creative economy, it could change things from Malawi. There could be economic growth, and we could diversify our economy. So many jobs could be created. As someone who's had the privilege to work in the creative industries of Malawi and Eswatini, I can tell you that the results speak for themselves. Events and festivals create jobs, attract global patrons, which thereby increase tourism. Our creative economy is rich and ready for its place on the global market. Through the trade, labor, and production of creative goods and services, I believe we can sell the Malawian dream and people will buy it. Thank you.